Hi, I'm Eric D'Amato, and welcome back to Let's Play Back to the Future, the game. Now we're, um... Last time, uh... We ended up in the, uh... What's it called? The... Hill Valley of 1930... The 1930s, after a little, um... After the DeLorean came back and told us, and we found Doc. Ah, I guess well, this is where the speakeasy is. Einstein and that How'd Doc ever Doc get mixed up in that? Oh, he's Doc Brown. He's extremely good at getting into trouble. Bank of... Hmm. Why is that scratched out? Bank of Italy? Ooh, soup. Let's go in the bank. How can I help you, sir? Without any money, I don't really have any business in there. This is a very good point. Um, think we should, will investigate the. Nah. Uh, I'm gonna explore the city a bit. I uh, try to find. I think finding Doc should be our first priority. We don't need soup. Police station. Who are you and what do you want? 1890. Can I talk to, uh, Carl Sagan? Are you his lawyer? Um, no. Then scram! Okay, okay! Why did you not just lie? Doc! <gasps> Artie! Doc Brown! The best character! What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> the automatic retrieval system. Of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Yes, we do. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that. But it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to. Yeah, we do. Yeah, you, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Hey, Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse! Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Uh, alert the authorities? We tell the authorities. Tell them what? That my friend from the future has proof that I'll be murdered tomorrow? They'd ship us both off to the loony bin. And trust me, you don't want to see the inside of a 1931 insane asylum. Very good point, actually. Uh, let's go back in time? Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Right. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc, and you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, <laughs> Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. I love, I love, love, love references like that. Well, of course, it's clearly made by fans of the original film. So, why don't we try to tough it out? Now that we know what's coming, maybe we sneak it past the gangsters with a bulletproof vest or something. That might work with one or two bullets, but from the looks of this article, it appears that I'm going to be mowed down in a hail of Tommy gun fire that rendered the innocent stranger little more than a puffy mass of bones and gristle. Who writes like that? According to the byline, one Edna Strickland. Ah, Strickland. I should have guessed. Uh, let's talk to the gangsters. <laughs> hey, maybe I could talk to the gangsters. Tell them they're about to shoot the wrong guy. I don't think the criminals of this era are going to be very receptive to a complete stranger telling them that their secret assassination plan is misguided. Do you? Very. <laughs> Only plan left. I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be. <gasps> that's it. What's, What's it? it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill. What? Not yet, 
I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great, I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me! 1931 me! Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? It is an insane Precisely. plan. What? Won't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go with my younger self into finishing the prototype. Okay. How am I supposed to convince your younger self to finish the rocket drill? Just tell him I need to break his older self out of jail? Absolutely not. Whatever you do, you can't tell my younger self anything about time travel. I won't come up with the inspiration for the flux capacitor for another 24 years. Yep. Then what am I supposed just to- Just be your charming self. From what I remember, I'm a pretty easygoing kid, so enlisting me in a scientific adventure should be a piece of cake. I doubt that. We won't have a game. Okay, well, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. It is Where a crazy idea. Where can I idea. find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why don't you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. Now we can go to the soup kitchen. Awesome. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. Oh, this can only end in good. Let's see what's down here. The world ends over there. Okay. See the police station sign? Hill Valley Police Station. Cripes, this place looks old, even for 1931. Well, it's from 1891, kid. Car. Poster. Soup kitchen. Right. Sisters of Mercy Soup Kitchen. Come for the soup, stay for the salvation. Eh, makes sense to me. Uh, soup kitchen door. Oh, that's the door. That makes sense. Okay, let's go in. Hey, we're not kicked out of a place for once. Yay! There's a guy in a cool hat eating soup. Reserved for charity. Oh, why? Biff? Kid! Grandpa? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry. So I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Artie McFly. Just Kristen thought I'd Blumber. come down for some soup. Think, McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Uh, no. Of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Just like, uh... Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Just like well, George and what? Biff from the first movie. What are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. I love how, like... McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Uh... Now scram! You got it, boss. What the... And don't come out until I give you the all clear. He stole his hat. He's a dick. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Heh. <laughs> Funny. I, I love how in ev any time period, any one of... Any member of the frickin' Tannen bloodline is evil. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. Okay. Let us open the kitchen door. The door's blocked by doors? Oh, today's soup is cabbage. Cool. 
There's no way I'm gonna keep that door open without some help. I don't like cabbage soup, though, so... Cue ball. Anything else? Look at the door. Yeah. We'll talk to cue ball. Nothing else we can do. <clears throat> okay. Hey, um... Uh, never mind. Okay, uh... Well, call on the telephone then, I guess. Brown resident. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? Courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. He didn't tell you a lot of stuff. Inscriptions. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long will you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. Eli should mind his own business. Like a thorn bush in a drunkard's hand is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. Heavy. I don't think those are real Bible passages. <laughs> Let's uh, go to the courthouse, find uh, find Doc Emmett Brown. Pre-Doc Emmett. Pre-Doc Brown, rather. Hey, hey. Boop -a -doop -a -doo. Okay. There we go. Right on course. Our walk cycle's kind of funny. Like, in a doofy way. Like, we walk like a bit of a dirt. Einstein! Yay! Found the doggy. I'm easily distracted by cute dogs. Hey, how you doing, Einie? Oh, I was worth it. I like Einstein. He's cute. I also like the 50s version of him. Copernicus! Okay, the path is, the park's just a through a throughway apparently. Uh, courthouse, 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 courthouse doors. Oh! Don't touch those. These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Michael, uh, Corleone. No, you're not. Brown, I'm, you're Harry Callahan. I'm a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Naturally, H2A multiplied by the inversion of H has to come out less than... Okay, that's annoying. I specifically said I was Dirty Harry, like Harry Callahan in the last video. Why is it decided I'm Michael Corleone? Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. Um, whoa, what are you doing? What's this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter, very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials abstruse? on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party of the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. Wow, I've got something important for you to do. Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. i got something more important for you to do. Mr. Corleone, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together, and we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Your dad tell you that? Every morning. <laughs> this is actually kind of funny. When will you be finished? So, Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till nine. Nine at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before ten. Uh, a couple quitting early. 
How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer uh, or soda? What do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. Keeping the wheels of justice turning, that's my one passion in life. Besides, if I left before I ate, my pop would kill me. Uh, he sounds... Sounds like you're a little scared I like of young father. Emmett, he's funny. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Are you sure? Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? <laughs> you must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. I don't believe you. Oh, hey, you. Oi, get back here. Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Me again. Can't you see I'm busy? Uh. See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, <laughs> which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bone's connected to the thigh bone? Amazing. Come on. Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I the... am not a scientist. Yes, you are. Admit Go it. ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong. I like the art style for this. Let's back to H. Get back here. Will you just give me a chance. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Come on, you can trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for, in more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. Oh, that word again! If you <laughs> insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! Okay. I think I know what to do with him. Hello? Oh, no. no solicitors! <laughs> Which is... Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone! And uh, about Don't your... Don't say it! We are, we are harassing them, though. Might... Um, but I think I know what we're, we're, we should do. Take a tape recorder. Equal to A is actually... Don't think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I... Oh. He's suspicious. Second dimensional harmonic oscillator then. Okay, hey, so... The plan... Is... I think we're gonna show... We're gonna show this to Doc. Because uh, that sounded sciency, what he was saying. And if anyone knows science, it's Dr. Emmett Brown. Wish you moved a bit faster. I, I do like this as a break from the um, a lot of the action-y games I've been doing lately. It's nice to do something non-action platformer based. Psst, Doc! Marty! Have you found my younger self yet? Where have you been all this time? I missed you. I've missed you too, Marty. But I thought it was important to let you live your own life for a while, free from the insanity of time travel. Mm. I gotta admit, it was nice to not have my family history blowing up in my face for a few months. Besides, I've been busy raising my own unpredictable teenagers. Oh right, he has kids now. Right, I forgot about that from the third movie. So how are Clara and the kids? They're fine, fine. Right now we're trying to decide where to send Jules and Vern to college. Clara prefers the 2020s, but I'm partial to the 1960s. 
We're planning on visiting you and Jennifer in 2011 soon. Me and Jennifer? In 2011? Oh, forget I said anything. Uh. Where'd the DeLorean come from? The last time I saw it had been smashed to pieces by a train. It's a fantastic story. Do you remember when the DeLorean got struck by lightning yes. in 1955? Yes, I do. Yeah? Unbeknownst to either of us, the lightning produced a temporal duplicate of the time machine, one that was tossed 70 years into the future. What? I found out about it during a trip to 2025 and recovered it just in time to stop Griff Tannen from vandalizing the time stream. Heavy. So that DeLorean... ...is for all intents and purposes the exact same machine as the original. Plus or minus little bells and whistles I've added over the years, of course. I like this is interesting. What are you doing here? So, what were you doing in 1931 anyway? Oh, nothing terribly exciting. Indulging in a little personal nostalgia, picking up a few rare out-of-print books to surprise Clara on her birthday, solving a historical mystery or two. The usual. The usual? You lead a pretty unusual life, Doc. It's an unusual universe, Marty. Well, to be fair, the usual for Doc is getting into trouble. <laughs> in the past. that That's kind of his thing. Though it's, um... I do love the guy who, who goes on and on about, like, the sanctity of protecting the time stream is basically time traveling as a shopping trip. I find that kind of funny. I hate to tell you, Doc, but your last time departed display is on the fritz. It is? So how did you find me? I found one of Edna Strickland's shoes in the DeLorean. How did one of her shoes get in the DeLorean? Einstein took it from her. He did? How strange. I he almost never attacks people. Not without a good reason, anyway. What happened to the time display? I hate to tell you, Doc, but your last time departed display... Oh, yeah. It is. We, we heard that already. Found... How did one... Einstein took... He did? Uh, what are you doing in jail? How'd you wind up in jail in 1931 anyway? During my trip to the past, I decided to look into one of Hill Valley's unsolved mysteries. The fire at the speakeasy. Exactly. I thought I was safely hidden across the street. But when the fire started, there was a tremendous explosion, and I was knocked unconscious by a stray brick. When I woke up, I was here in jail, charged with arson. That's horrible. I know. Worse yet, I still don't know who started the fire. I love how Doc Brown can get hit in the head with a flying brick and just fall unconscious. That kills most people. Guess who I bumped into at the soup kitchen? My grandfather. No! Don't worry, I didn't talk to him or change his future or anything. Good. I wish I could, though. This era's tannin is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kit Tannen's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. Right, Sylvia. Good, that's nice. Uh, uh, might as well get to the point. So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. Multiply by the inverse of A, H to the A, multiply by the inverse of A. Good grief! Is that me? I sound so... Young? I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me? Obviously, he, um, Dr. Emmett Brown just said that only if it, if this is all happening on a computer screen... Does that mean if we continue with the storyline, we'll screw up the time the time stream? I, I don't know if we should continue. Hang in there, Doc. Not the best choice of words, Marty. Because <laughs> they still had hanging in 1931. That really... I mean, we're going to do it. We have to. But that's still... I like little nods and stuff like that in this game. 
1931. Ooh. Oh, yeah, he's going in there. Wait for him to leave. He's gonna stand here. I'm gonna actually have a drink of soda. And now I can go uh, find him again. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Yeah. Great Scott! Yeah. If H is the Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A. <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about science? Um... From the planet Vulcan. Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill. Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket drill. power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Now nah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll Triple have guess. to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done. Yeah, I love the old I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. What is it? I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. It's part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yeah. Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. I've got a subpoena my grandpa. No! <gasps> Shh! It's Kid Tannen. This purple soup. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. This is a very good point. I think that's, you know, like uh, concrete overshoes, but for the whole body? I got a few questions for you, Emmett. About the subpoena. You have to deliver a lot of subpoenas? Father's always sending me out to do these dirty jobs. He wants to expose me to different kinds of people. All he's exposed me to is a lot of new curse words. Very good information. Why don't you quit? If serving subpoenas is such dirty work, why don't you just say no? Look, what's the worst thing that can happen to me on this job? You could get shot. Yeah, well, believe me, that's nothing compared to what I'll get if I mouth off to my pop. <laughs> Any idea where we could find Artie? Not a jot. If only we had a way of tracking him. I think that means the dog. This subpoena's for Arthur McFly? Have you seen him? We're a few seconds in the soup kitchen, but I think he's gone back into hiding. Brilliant deduction, Einstein. Yes, you cute little dog. Uh... How about Kid Tannen? What do we know about him? He's loud, he's obnoxious, he's not very bright, and he doesn't like anybody getting in his way. Yep, that's a tannin, all right. What do you know about Arthur McFly? Certified accountant. Graduated Hill Valley five classes ahead of me. Seems like a nice fellow, actually. How did he get mixed up with a guy like Kid Tannen? Who knows? Sometimes people find themselves stuck in situations they can't get out of. This is a good question. This might be a stupid question, but couldn't you have designed your rocket-powered drill to run on fuel that, you know, isn't illegal? Illegal? What does law have to do with science? Science has its own laws. You of all people should know that. 
But couldn't you tweak your engine design a little so it runs on something else? Like what? I don't know. Gas, maybe? Gasoline? <laughs> Yesterday's news. You'll see. By 1940, automobiles will all run on pure alcohol. Um, not quite. Sorry. Some of us down at the patent office are wondering, what made you think of a rocket-powered drill? Ah, that'd be Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. It was... a revelation! Yeah, that's kind of what we figured. Have you read The Time Machine? H.G. Wells? Not yet, but it's on my list. Read it, it's really good. So, uh, I'm gonna go talk to, uh... We'll get that subpoena delivered. My name isn't... Michael Corleone! Yeah! Um, I'm sorry, Harry Callahan. That is my name. Do you see Strickland over here somewhere? Oh yeah, there she is. Hello. Hey, Edna. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Corleone. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop as we in the newspaper business say. Oh my. What's the scoop? I've heard rumors that something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. Interesting. And, oh, we mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the Stay Sober Society? Not to mention all the charitable institutions that depend on me for soup deliveries. Did you finish the story you interviewed me for? Yeah, about Carl Sagan? Yes, but those pig-headed editors at the paper rejected it. They said my story was slanted, and that I was glorifying a suspected arsonist. As if their stories aren't always glorifying the criminal vermin that run this town. This whole thing makes me so mad I could spit. Though of course I never would. There's an ordinance against it, and it's so untidy. Interesting. You make soup deliveries. You make hot soup deliveries? It's one of my many small contributions to the good cause. Healthy bodies, healthy souls. Or so one hopes. I pick up barrels of hot soup at the kitchen, and I deliver them hither and thither. Hill Valley Orphanage, the St. Francis Xavier Ranch for Unwanted Children, Foggy Mountain Home for the Incurably Insane, Shady Acres Rest Home. Oh, I can barely keep track of them all. It's a very big job. Hey, I can help you deliver soup. I don't need a lot of time to charities. Oh? Which ones? The, um, Mario Brothers. Ah, yes. The Italians do so many good works. If you'll just fix it so I can pick up the barrels of soup. Now hold your horses, let's not get over eager. I drive the soup cycle in this town, and I'm not about to turn it over to an upstart. But if you're well connected with the local charitable institutions... Yeah? You can let me know when they're running low on soup. Okay. What's the Stay Sober Society? You haven't heard of the SSS? They do the not. most marvelous work, taking hopeless drunken bums and turning them into former hopeless drunken bums. I'm one of the founding members. Well, and not to say that I was ever, well, you know. Anyway, we've always met in the cellar of the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen, but for some reason the new managers don't want us down there, so we're stuck. We've got nowhere to meet. Think that we might find alcohol down there. I'm sorry about the way Einstein lit into you back there. Well, I hope you've learned to keep him under control. I have, sorry. Yeah, I found someone to keep him distracted. Very good! Now let's see if you know your multiplication tables. So, gotta find a charity that needs a soup I delivery and uh, oh, somewhere they can meet. Where? You have, your, you have a more important story to work on right now, Edna. I'll leave you to that. I'm just gonna go harass Biff Tannen. Because that's, that's a good idea, sure, not to get me shot at all. That's not the way I want to go. Do, 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 do. Let's harass Biff Tannen, then call it video. Oh, Kid Tannen, sorry. Yeah, let's harass matches, too. We can harass everyone. What the hell, Matches? You, you got Kiwi all over my socks! Sorry, boss. Get out of here. How about you? Huh? I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it? Uh, death wish. I guess I'm here to shine your shoes. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. He's very busy today. Fair enough. Uh, do you know where he is? Since you're Arthur's boss, you know where he is, right? He's at the, uh, office. Well, where's the office? I forget. Since you're Arthur's boss, he's at... Where? Yeah, I, I forget. That was a repeat question. Sorry. So, when do you think Arthur will be leaving the office? When I tell him he can leave the office. Hey, you missed a spot. Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> Can I have some peanuts? Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Don't mind if I do. All right, break time's over. Back to work. I think I see where this is going. How come you won't let the Stay Sober Society hold their meeting in the cellar of your soup kitchen? We got other plans for that cellar. Fair enough. What's your racket? I guess you won't talk about your business. Why not? I got nothing to hide. I recently acquired controlling interest in the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. Uh. Isn't the soup kitchen an odd line of business for a guy like you? I like soup. Plus, I got a heart as big as all outdoors. Uh, buff a little harder. I want to see myself in the toes. So, got the... so, one more thing about that hat. You're testing my patience, boy. I think I have a plan. I sure could go for some peanuts. Lucky for you, I'm in a giving mood. Hey, kid! Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey! Yes! Come on! What'd you do? Come on! I please let this be the skateboard a skateboarding scene. Give me that hat, you lousy crook! Damn it! Ooh, this is tense. Whoa. Nobody makes a monkey out of Kid Tannen. <laughs> Ow, fix me up. <laughs> Gail Zemeckis, it was a Back to the Future was a Robert Zemeckis. How did you learn how to move like that? Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out. So we uh, we got a hat, and uh, I think I know what we're supposed to be doing with it. And we'll do that in the, and we'll do that in the next video. So until then, I've been Merrick Tomato, and I'll see you in the future. Hi. Hope you enjoyed that video. This was played, recorded, and edited by me, Merrick D'Amato. The art was by Ann Rogers, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Ciao!